Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and we ask one question on this channel, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? Now, a lot of people, young and old, they think the old music is better, but I'm not so sure. And today, we're going to continue our listography, or discography, whichever term you prefer, of the uh, 30 favorite albums of 2003. So this is the top 15, so we're getting into the meat of it now, and we'll get right into it. Um, Coming in at number 15, bringing up my spreadsheet here, is an album that I just discovered this year. And this is Sheena Ringo from Japan and her album Kalk Salmon Curry no Hana. Man, this is a wonderful album. Uh, this is avant-garde pop. She's uh, rated really high on Rate Your Music. Um, like I say, I just discovered this album and I love it. It's really crazy. Of course, I don't know what she's singing about because everything's in Japanese, but it's she's just really fun and check her out. Sheena Ringo and uh, Kalk Salmon Curry no Hana. I don't know exactly what that means, but I know that Salmon is Japanese for semen, if you can believe that. So really interesting album. Um, yeah, highly recommended. And coming in at number 14 is another international album from Argentina, Juana Molina, and her album Segundo. And Segundo means second, so this is her second album. And I just love her. I've featured her on the channel before. She does a kind of folktronica Latin thing, and it's really wonderful. And she's uh, also rather avant-garde, and I just really enjoy Juana Molina. So... She's um, not that popular in Argentina, but she's uh, popular in Japan, the United States, Canada, and uh, parts of Europe, and I highly recommend Juana Molina. Coming in at number 13 is a band you're going to know. This is the Black Keys and their album Thick Freakness, nice distorted guitars. and. Uh, this is uh, kind of before they blew up, but I really like Thick Freakness now. Their first couple albums I'm okay with, I like them, uh, but this is the first album that I I think I really truly liked and uh, good enough to be number 13 on the list. Thick Freakness is a, yeah, just wonderful blues-based uh, drummer and guitarist and Patrick Carney and uh, Dan Auerbach. Uh, they f they sell out stadiums and this is this to me is kind of where it all started and a uh, great album cover love these guys now we're going to be doing some compilations and anthologies on here because i include those and number 12 is a band i've seen in concert and i'm not a huge fan of them it's the grateful dead and it's their compilation the very best of the grateful dead uh 17 tracks this is a group that deserves a double uh, CD anthology, but for me personally, uh, one disc, 17 songs, is enough for their studio work, and then once in a while I like to listen to some of their live material, but this has everything I want on it, and it's enough dead for me, uh, about 70 minutes, and it's got my favorite songs on it, like Estimated Profit is a great song that I love, and then it's got Box of Rain and just, you know, the dead tracks that I really like. They're all on here. It's a anthology put together by Rhino, which I love, and great stuff. The Grateful Dead, the very best of the Grateful Dead. Okay, Henry, you know I'm recording a video. <laughs> I just fed him, but he wants to make some noise anyway. Uh, he scratched me tonight. He jumped on me and drew blood. It's, uh, hmm. Anyway, coming in at number 13, or number 11, I'm sorry, number 11 is a rap album. And this is Outcast, Speaker Box and Love Below, a uh, very highly rated album. It blew up huge. And it's two sides, Big Boy on one side and Andre 3000 on the other. And I like both discs. And, you know, this is the album that had the hit Hey Ya on it. Uh, but I like it quite a bit. Um, so... Uh, Outcast, uh, is this my favorite album by them? No, but I like it quite a bit. Um, like I say, double disc and it holds up pretty well. And the way they uh, separated themselves out and each did a disc, it, it seems to work on this particular album. Normally I would like it if they, you know, intersperse their songs, but I think 
the format on this works quite well and you guys I'm sure are more than familiar with this. Now we're getting into the top 10. Uh, number 10 is My Morning Jacket from Louisville, Kentucky. The album, it still moves. Uh, songs like Golden, really great. I love My Morning Jacket, a band I was lucky enough to see in concert. And I love these guys. Very melodic, but just that touch of weirdness that makes them different and special. And I don't think there's any band that sounds quite like them. And Jim James, terrific singer. Uh, so I love My Morning Jacket. Coming in at number nine, a solo album from uh, one of the founding members of The Clash. This is Joe Strummer and the Mus Mescaleros. Joe Strummer and the Mescaleros, Street Corps. Love this album. Get Down Moses, great song. Cover of Bob Marley's Redemption song. Um, just, uh, man, this, song, this album has such great attitude and great playing and Joe Strummer's in fine form. He made two albums with the Mescaleros and this is the one that I like the best. So Street Corps, Joe Strummer and the Mescaleros. Number eight, uh, World Without Tears by Lucinda Williams from Louisiana. And uh, this is another album that the British press loved. Uh, most of them gave it five stars. Uh, I love Lucinda Williams. I love her southern drawl and her you know, she's got um, songs like, uh, what, what do you got, uh, Bleeding Fingers, and you've got Those Three Days, and um, the title track, and so many great, great, great tracks on here. Um, I, I just adore Lucinda Williams. I think she's one of the best Americana artists, and I never had the chance to see her in concert. Uh, she's... She's one of my favorite artists of the 21st century. So World Without Tears, Lucinda Williams, wonderful album. Coming in number seven, um, The Essential Sly and the Family Stone. So to me, there's no perfect anthology of them. Um, I would like probably a disc and a half of them. So this album maybe is a little, you know, slightly padded, but it's got everything you would want. Uh, from Family Affair to Dance to the Music to um, uh, there's a, you know all the great tracks from There's a Riot going on and they really have um, you know have gone light on the early period light on the late period and then gone real heavy on the middle period which is the period that I like and Sly and the Family Stone essential um, band uh, just you know Proto punk, uh, funk, proto funk, and I love these guys. Uh, there'd be no Prince without Sly Stone, so uh, very influential band, and I really enjoy them quite a bit. Coming in at number six is another anthology, and this is an artist I love a lot. Seen her a couple times in concert, highly underrated. This is Joan Armitrading, Love and Affection. Joan Armitrading Classics 1975 to 1983, and the only thing that's really confounding about this album is that she was uh, on this record label, A&M, well past 1983 uh, into uh, the 90s, and for some reason they didn't cover any of that material. Basically in 1983 she put out one of those greatest hits albums called Track Record that had two... Um, Henry, could you please be quiet? Thank you. Um, they. Uh, had two tracks on there, you know, like they like to do with the Greatest Hits album, put a couple new songs on there, so this particular anthology pretty much takes track record and then fleshes it out with a second disc worth of material. Uh, she's um, from England, uh, originally born in St. Kitts, and I'm a huge fan. She's got like this incredible vocal range and sings all these songs about relationships. If you don't know Joan Armitrading, she's a uh, a hidden secret, one of those people that should be much bigger than she is. Coming in number five, one of my favorite bands of the 21st century, Radiohead. You guys knew Radiohead would be on here, Hail to the Thief. Uh, if not my favorite Radiohead album, it's still good enough to be number five on my list. Um, yeah, this is uh, 2 plus 2 equals 5 and Sail to the Moon and all these great, great songs and nice dark lyrics from Tom York and great singing and and uh, Hail to the Thief, uh, a politically 
tinged album. Uh, it's just great. I love it. Coming in at number four, Funkadelic. Motor City Madness, the ultimate Funkadelic Westbound collection. Now, here's another maybe flawed anthology because Funkadelic recorded for two labels, Westbound and then they changed to Warner Brothers. And all the anthologies are just on one label or the other. And there is no anthology of Funkadelic covering their entire career. So you've got to either have a Warner Brothers anthology or a Westbound one. So this is a double CD and it contains about 50% of their Westbound catalog, so it's hardly a compilation. I mean, it's half of everything they recorded. But I love listening to this. It's, uh, you know, like I say, it pretty much takes about half of every album and puts the best cuts on there. And, you know, in the Warner Brothers years, I love songs like One Nation Under a Groove. That's not on here. But you got all the great tracks from Maggot Brain and free your ass and your mind will follow and all those great early funkadelic uh, things so along with this and Sly and the Family Stone I've got two funk anthologies in here but you can't do any better than Sly Stone and George Clinton that's you know unless you go back to James Brown who started it all this is really for the 70s this is the best stuff Coming in at number three is another anthology, again a flawed anthology, but it's the best one out there. This is The Doors, Legacy, the Absolute Best. And I think the reason it's flawed is they end the anthology with um, the celebration of the Lizard King, and I could do without that track. I wish they'd uh, put the soft parade in there instead, but I love The Doors, and uh, I'm not always in the mood for them, but when I am, this is... Um, this is all the best material right here. It's got Roadhouse Blues and L.A. Woman and Riders on the Storm and Light My Fire and Backdoor Man and Crystal Ship and all the great Doors tracks, the end and the music's over and everything that I like. And I enjoy um, some of the Doors live albums also, but when I want to hear the studio material, this one right here, it just picks. It's a little heavy on the first album, but overall, I think it's, um, it really does capture uh, their best tracks. Um, love it. Number two, uh, The White Stripes, Elephant. So this would be my favorite album of the 21st century because my number one is an anthology. But uh, this is the album with Seven Nation Army, but it's good all the way through. Um, I absolutely love this album. It's my absolute favorite, and the White Stripes Elephant. I think it's my favorite White Stripes album. It's hard to say. Um, there was an album made before this one that I like quite a bit also. Uh, but yeah, the, um, Elephant by White Stripes, great stuff. So I've got White Stripes and Black Keys both in here in my top 15. And then number one is a box set. I actually own this. Let me grab it. Uh, let me see if I've, here it is, right here. I'll show you the real album here. This is a four CD box set called No Thanks, The 70s Punk Rebellion. And, and the thing about punk rock was it really was singles based, I feel. Um, there aren't that many punk albums that I really listen to, but this has everybody on it. Um, you know, from the typical people like the Clash and the Ramones to your um, less lesser known bands, you know, you got the Magazine and the Vibrators and Stiff Little Fingers and the Fall and all these really great tracks on here. So this is number one on my list. This is number one on Rate Your Music, so we're in complete agreement on that. No thanks. The 70s Punk Rebellion. Uh, love this 4 CD and that's my limit 4 CDs anything more than 4 CDs I do not put on this list so this is it it's a box set but I love it uh, I love punk and new wave uh, just awesome so that's it that's my top 15 let me know what yours are and what you think about this list and uh, thanks for joining me if you like what we're doing, a senior reacting to the new music of the 21st century, hit that like or subscribe button. And as we say here in Bonita, Mexico, Buen Dia.